All right, zoology students, welcome back. Um, we are here for our fourth and final installment of your online educational series on mollusks. And today we're going to wrap up with my favorite um, kind of mollusks, and those are the cephalopods. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So let's reduce that. Let's reduce that and let's go ahead and get started here on the cephalopods. So the cephalopods include um, the squids, squids, octopi, the nautilus, which we're going to talk about, and the cuttlefish, which really the cuttlefish uh, to me is, is a small squid. So they are the most complex of all the mollusks. And some zoologists would argue that they may be the most complex of all invertebrates. Now, that's a pretty big claim because invertebrates far outnumber all other groups of organisms on the planet. Um, back before we were uh, called off for the virus, uh, you may remember me talking about the arthropods and insects and how there were way more, way more arthropods than any other group of, of organisms. Uh, insects so far outnumber everything else. It's just unbelievable. There are, again, one of my amazing statistics that I give is that the fact that there are over 350,000 different species of beetles alone that have been classified. So... That's a pretty big claim. You know, you have uh, over a million species that have been identified and classified on this planet. Most of them are insects and other arthropods. And to say that an organism is the most advanced of all invertebrates, that's, that's a lot of invertebrates. So that, that's something to really think about. So let's go ahead and continue on. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the octopus, which um, here we have a good look at the octopus. You can see the eyes. You can uh, notice that the tentacles are covered in suction cups. And there have been some studies that indicate that the octopus ring of ganglion, these tentacles will work independently of each other, uh, meaning that the brain can actually pay attention to what one tentacle is doing at the same time. Um, the best way for me to explain that is if you think about your eyes, uh, you have two eyes and they work in concert. Imagine if your eyes could do like a chameleon and spread out and do thing and look in two independent directions, but your brain would allow you to pay attention to what both eyes are looking at at the same time in two different directions. And that, that's hard to imagine. An octopus can do that with all eight of its tentacles. So it, its tentacles know what's going on and what they're sensing all around them. So again, this leads to the claim that they are uh, one of the most complex of all invertebrates. So if we look over here, we can see the octopus beak. This is their mouth part. Uh, this is one of really the only rigid part to their body is this this beak. Um, everything else, all the other body parts, everything else is very soft, uh, very malleable. I guess you can use it. They can really flatten out and and squeeze into different places. Um, one of my favorite things about this animal is not only their intelligence. They sh they do show some problem-solving capabilities, but their ability to camouflage. So if you look right here, this is the outline of an octopus. So not only can they match, can they match the color of their background, but if you'll notice, they have these little raised dimples on their, on their skin, on their covering. And this not only gives them the two-dimensional camouflage, with the color and the patterns, but by, by being able to change the texture of their skin, it gives them 
uh, a 3D camouflage. So they basically can have their own built-in ghillie suit. And if we look right here, here's the other octopus right there. And you can see its eyes are right there and right there. And that guy just flat disappears as he's lying there on the bottom. So they have a very, very... Um, almost unmatched ability to camouflage themselves in their environment and couple that with their um their intelligence that's why they're one of my favorite favorite animals to talk about uh in zoology class so here's the nautilus now some of you might be wondering about their shell and and why it's not classified as a snail well uh the big difference between the snail and the nautilus shell is the nautilus only lives in this open area okay as they grow they'll add a new chamber so in the nautilus shell these chambers are all sealed off from each other so in a snail though they can they're able to access the entire uh the entire shell but the nautilus as it grows it adds a new chamber here and so its whole existence will live in front of all these chambers. So then as it grows again, it'll add a new chamber here. And it will just continue to grow and live out in that, in that anterior or that front opening to the shell. And they move with jet propulsion, which is totally different from the snail or slug. They crawl on their foot. But here they use the foot. They squirt water. We come over to this picture. They will squirt water out this way which then propels them in the opposite direction. We do some physics, equal and opposite direction, of course. So when they push water this way, that pushes their body this way. And that's how they uh, propel themselves through their environment. And that's why they're considered cephalopods. Also, uh, you'll notice a very prominent eye and tentacles, which is uh, body parts that a snail does not have. All right, and here we have a cuttlefish, um, very similar looking to a squid with their body plan. This is their mantle. Uh, this whole body covering here is their mantle. Here is that siphon that will squirt water out and allow them to propel themselves through their environment. And they also have the incredible ability of changing the texture of their skin. You can see here they have the little dimples coming out. Um, they have a rough appearance to their skin. And this guy is really trying to blend in with this gravel here on the bottom uh, of the ocean here. And you can see the eye, the very well-developed eye. So they, they too have the ability to change their color with cells called chromatophores and also have the ability to change the texture of their skin, which not only gives them 2D, but also gives them 3D camouflage and makes them really neat creatures. So... Cephalopods have a modified foot that is concentrated into the head region. It takes the form of a funnel, which we've already talked about, for expelling water from the mantle cavity. And that is how they swim or propel themselves through the environment. They squirt water out, which pushes them in the opposite direction. The anterior margin of the head is drawn out into a circle or crown of arms or tentacles. So an octopus is going to have eight tentacles. Uh, a squid will have two arms and eight tentacles, and the arms are going to be longer. They range in size from two to three centimeters up to the giant squid, which is the largest invertebrate known, and they're not real sure how big they get because they live so deep and are so secretive, but they have uh, evidence that suggests that they can be up to 14 meters in length, which is, if we convert that to... Our English measurements, uh, that's about 46 feet long. So that is a big, big invertebrate. Most of your uh, cephalopods will swim by forcefully expelling water from the mantle cavity through a ventral funnel by jet propulsion. So if we go back to that video link uh, from earlier in the, or in the uh, mollusk lesson, that octopus was squirting the water out, uh, that little video link that I had. Uh, a couple days ago, uh, you can revert back to that and remember how that water squirts out of that siphon and it uses that to propel itself through its aquatic environment. 
the octopus is different because it can move its tentacles in, in uh, a, a, a wider range of motion. Uh, it will also be able to crawl by using its tentacles and suction cups. So it has, it, it's the best of both worlds. It can crawl and it can uh, propel itself by squirting water out in, in the opposite direction. And they are, as I said before, the octopus is a very, very smart animal. Uh, and they show problem solving capabilities. Um, after you watch this video, if you really want to go down the rabbit hole, search octopus videos and octopus uh, solving, uh, finding its way through mazes. Um, they have lots of videos of an octopus opening jars so they can actually twist the lid off a jar to get inside. Um, They're really, really, really smart, uh, incredible creatures. So um, if you find yourself here at the end of this lesson, with a few free minutes, you may want to get onto YouTube and uh, go go watch some of those videos. They're, they're really good. So yeah, that is going to bring us to... Uh, again, their color change ability, they have uh, the cells that allow them to do this are pigment cells called chromatophores, and they can use those to change their colors within their skin by expanding and contracting to produce a color change. They change color for camouflage, both offensive and defensive. So if you're watching some of these videos, the octopus can blend in with its environment and ambush its prey. And also when threatened, it can go ahead and uh, hide itself so that the predators chasing it can't find it. Um, there's an octopus out there that mimics um, venomous sea snakes so that it can be left alone. Um, they're, really, they're really pretty clever creatures. Um, but they are behavioral and associated with alarm or courtship. The squid will uh, use its color change ability to communicate to other squid uh, when there's danger, when they're upset, or when they're trying to impress a mate. And I've even seen footage of a squid. One half of its body remained uh, very pale in color, indicating that it was not communicating but the other half that was facing the female was going through rapid color change, um, courting the female. And since it wasn't going through color change on the other side of its body, any other male squid to that side would uh, be fooled into thinking that it wasn't trying to court that female. So uh, pretty amazing creatures when you think of it. Many of the deep sea squid are bioluminescent. And for those of you who are unclear, or unfamiliar with that term, bioluminescence is the ability to light up. So a lightning bug or a firefly has bioluminescence. And since the squid are so deep, uh, deep enough that uh, sunlight will not penetrate to those depths, they produce their own light for themselves down there in the, the very, very deepest part of the, of the ocean. So that concludes this lecture. Um, that's all the material we have for this unit. Let me sit back up here so you can see me. Um, this is it for phylum mollusca. So um, there's going to be, I believe we have all, I've already assigned the matching questions that are on there. So hopefully that has prepared you. There will, of course, be a set of questions at the end of this lecture for you to log on to on Schoology and take uh, verifying that you have watched this lesson. And then, of course, uh, I believe we're going to have a quick review I will post. Uh, of course, my Quizlet page is there, but you can also go to Kahoot. I will post a challenge link, and then we will get ready for our test. So um, be ready for that coming down the pike. All right. So hope everything's going well. Uh, if you have any questions um, about any of the material that we've discussed, Go ahead and shoot me an email, and hopefully by this time, I will have my office hours posted where we can communicate face-to-face -face through uh, the Google chat room. So um, good luck, and we'll see you later.